Welcome back to this course on discrete mathematics as we move on with this course and now we are into this uh, rules of inference. We talked about proposition, we talked about uh, quantifiers and we defined what is uh, universal quantifiers and extensional quantifiers. Of course, we saw how to translate English sentences into these logical statements and of course, we, we use these English sentences to form some symbolic logics, so that we can express it in symbols and later on today, we are going to see after translating the English sentence into a logical symbols. In fact, we can draw out this argument to make certain conclusions. So, that is about this rules of inference. Of course, here is where we are going to use all the laws all the principles, all the statements, theorems that we have studied until now. For example, we talked about some De Morgan's law, we talked about modus ponens, modus tollens, we talked about contrapositive, inverse, converse, we talked about universal quantifiers, we talked about conditional statements. Yes, let us try to bring them together and let us use it in the rules of inference for us to understand the argument and try to draw some conclusion out of it. So, let us start here. Rules of inference for universal quantifiers. Assume that we know that for all values of x, p of x is true. If that is the assumption, then we can conclude that p of c is true, where c stands for a specific constant, any value. This is called the universal instantiation. You got it? If suppose for all values of x, p of x is true, then we conclude that it has to to be true for any value of x, any value c that is p of c, which means that this whole item is called universal instantiation. Universally, you are taking the instance for any value within the universe, of course. If your universe is say integer value, so any for any value of the integer c, this is true. That is why it is been called universal instantiation. Assume that we know that p of c is true for any value c, then we can conclude that for all values of x, p of x is true. What is this called as? This is called the universal generalization. You assume that only for one value c, it is true and with that assumption, you are concluding that for all values of x, p of x is true. If you make such conclusion, you are as if generalizing. It is like for example, if one student copy in the class, you conclude that everybody has copied. That is like generalizing to everyone. I suppose that does not happen, but for an example, I am just telling how this real, real world things can happen. Yes, it is like if an employer is corrupt, then at times people conclude that the whole office or all the employers in that office is corrupt. It is like generalizing the system. Rules of inference for extensional quantifiers. Assume that we know for some value of x, p of x is true. Then we conclude that p of c is true for some value of c. So, this is extensional instantiation. 
So, we assume that for or for some value of x p of x is true. In other words, you could say that there exists a value of x for, for which p of x is true. If this is the assumption, you make the conclusion that for p of c is true for some value of c. So, that is called the extensional instantiation. Then comes the next part. Assume that we know that p of c is true for some value of c. With this assumption, then you conclude that for some value of x, p of x is true. This is s as you expected, this is called extensional generalization, generalizing things based on the observation. Okay, let us take an example of proof. Given the hypothesis, Mary, a student in this class, owns a red convertible. Everybody who owns a red convertible has gotten at least one speeding ticket. So, let us say the first part, Mary, a student in this class, as uh, say C of Mary, everyone who owns a red convertible has got a speeding ticket, let us call R of Mary owns a red convertible. So, can you conclude somebody in this class has gotten a speeding ticket? So, for all values of x, R of x implies T of x. In other words, For all students in this class, everybody who owns the red convertible that is R of x implies T of x who got the speeding ticket. So, that is why for all values of x, for all values of x, for all who owns the red convertible implies that has got a speeding ticket or everybody who owns a red convertible has got a, at least one speeding ticket. And can you conclude this one for some value x that is somebody in the class has got a speeding ticket. Yes, somebody in the class. So, C of x and T of x. So, the person has to be in the class as well as he has got a speeding ticket. Let us try to examine this further. For all values of x, R of x implies T of x is your hypothesis given in the problem. And uh, we know that R of Mary implies T of Mary. That is, uh, Mary wants the red convertible, which means that Mary got the speeding ticket. That is universal instantiation from the step 1. So, Mary is given to us which she owns the red convertible that is second hypothesis. Can you relate this? R of Mary implies T of Mary and uh, we know that R of Mary is true. So, when you use modus ponens you can make this conclusion T of Mary is also true she got the speeding ticket. So, that is from step 2 1, step 3. And uh, C of Mary is also given as our first hypothesis. She is a student in the class as well. So, C of Mary and T of Mary. So, now we are going to the next part conjunction using T uh, using step 4 and step 5. So, you have this two part C is C of Mary, Mary is a student in this class who owns a red convertible and she has got a speeding ticket conjunction. So, you could convert that into this extensional generalization where you can say there exists a student in the class such that C of x and T of x such that she got a speeding ticket. 
she is in the class C of x and as well as she got a speeding ticket from step 6. Thus, uh, we have shown that somebody in this class has got an, a speeding ticket. So, can you see how we try to infer based on the given hypothesis and we used several things that we have learnt. We use universal instantiation, we use modus bonus conjunction and extensional generalization to make this conclusion. Let us see another example. So, hypothesis given to us is there is someone in this class who has been to France. Everyone who goes to France visits the Louvre. So, can you make this conclusion? Can you conclude that someone in this class has visited the Louvre? Let us try to see it out. There is someone in this class. So, someone in this class, there exists a person in this class x such that he is in the class and he has been to France. So, that is why we have and operation C of x and f of x. Everyone who goes to France, everyone who goes to France, so you have this everyone who goes to France implies that they also visit Lower. So, that is it f of x implies L of x. So, what conclusions are we have to make based on the given hypothesis or based on the given things? We have to assume, we have to conclude that there is someone in the class, there is someone in the class has in, has been in the class as well as has been to or visited Lower. Let us see one by one how it works out. There exists someone in the class who has been to France, hypothesis 1, C of y and f of y, extension instantiation. You are trying to instance using the extension instantiation from the step 1 and f of y that is simplification from step 2. We know that when you have under operation you can simplify because both has to be true. Then you have uh, c of y again that is simplification f of y should has to be true c of y has to be true and now you can use uh, second hypothesis for all values of x, f of x implies L of x and uh, f of y implies L of y, again the universal instant instantiation. Then you know L of y, because based on the modus bonus and step 3 and 6, you can come with this modus bonus, that part C of y and L of y, conjunction is coming that means that you are there almost at the conclusion here. There exists a person, a student who is in the class and also been to load that is C of x and L of x. So, that is the conclusion. Thus, we show that someone in the class has visited low. So, that is a simple example that we have in hand. Let us uh, consider another interesting examples. If a helicopter can fly or cows eat grass, then crow is the national bird. Or uh, let us take it as a magpie as the national bird here. Let us uh, say, yeah, let us say here is the magpie. So, if helicopter can fly or cow eats 
grass, then magpie is the national bird. If magpie is the national bird, then pizza tastes good with sushi. But pizza tastes horrible with sushi. Therefore, cow eats grass. Okay, let's uh, see and apply this information. Helicopter can fly H. Cow eats grass G. Magpie is uh, national bird M. Pizza tastes better with sushi. Let's say it as P. So the things given to us here are uh, according to the problem we have uh, helicopter can fly or cow eats grass. So H or V implies M. What is that? Helicopter can fly or cow eats grass, then magpie is the national bird. That implies magpie is the national bird. So, H or G implies M, that is the first part. And the second thing, actually, we have three hypotheses given in the problem. The first hypothesis is well defined. Second hypothesis is if magpie is uh, the national bird, if magpie is the national bird, then pizza tastes good with sushi. Yeah. M implies P. The third one is, but pizza tastes horrible with sushi. So, negation of P. Therefore, what we have to conclude? Therefore, we have to conclude that cow does not eat grass. So, can you follow this idea of uh, principles? behind this. So, as we are about to uh, move on with this topic, I like to introduce two more concept on this. One is called uh, disjunctive disjuncting disjunctive soligoism and uh, another one is called hypothetical soligoism. So, let me define what it is. So, disjunctive soligoism means that if suppose we have P or Q and uh, you have negation of P is given, therefore, you can conclude that it is Q. That is P or Q when you have P or Q and you have negation of P given to us, we can conclude that it is, therefore, you can conclude Q. In other words, it is like um, P or Q and you are given with negation of P, which implies that it is Q. So, this is one of the rules that we have in hand. So, let me also give you what it means to be hypothetical soligoism. Hypothetical soligoism, which means that P implies Q and Q implies R. Therefore, you can conclude that P implies R that is something similar to like A equals B, B equals C, therefore, P equal, uh, therefore A equals C. So, with this simple uh, thing, let us uh, move on with this idea of this rules of uh, disjunctive as well as the hypothetical soligoism and let us try to figure out this problem on this helicopter can fly, cow eats grass, magpie is the national bird, pizza tastes better. Let us see how it is done. Okay, based on this 1 and 2, let us take this 1 and 2 and uh, from this 1 and 2, can we use some parts to understand this? We know that H or G implies M and M implies P. 
do you think that hypothetical solidarism can be used there? Yes, of course, right. You can think about it. You can, from this one and two, you can conclude that H or G implies P. Can you say that? Yes, of course, we can say that. That is based on this hypothetical solidarism. So, let us say uh, 4 is H or G, this implies P. Let us take uh, now, we call this as 4 and uh, with this 4 and uh, 3, can you get some points from that? So, we are given with uh, H or G implies P and negation of P is given to be true. So, you can try to use this uh, so called modus modus tollens, right. So, let us say you are given with uh, 3, which is uh, negation of P. So, when you use when you use modus tollens, what conclusions you can make? Therefore, you can make the conclusion that it is negation of H or G. So, let us say it as 5. So, now uh, you can use the so called De Morgan's law when you take the negation inside there. So, let us say use De Morgan's law negation of H and negation of G. We use De Morgan's law and as you can see this is and negation of H and negation of G. So, uh, you can simplify it. Therefore, it should be negation of G has to be true, right? Simplification. And negation of H should also be true because of and part. So, therefore, what you can conclude here, the what is the final conclusion? According to the argument, uh, there are three hypotheses was given and based on this you are trying to use the rules of inference and finally, you are concluding that uh, cows do not eat grass, right. Cows therefore, the conclusion is cow do not eat grass, that is the conclusion from this one. Okay, let us move on and see another example and I hope you can also try to follow along and try to solve uh, this next example. You are asked to prove or disprove the validity of this following argument. Every living thing is a plant or animal, David's dog is alive and it is not a plant. All animals have hearts, hence David's dog has a heart. All clear explanations are satisfactory, some excuses are unsatisfactory, hence some excuses are not clear. So, you can uh, think about one by one. Let us talk about the first one A. Every living thing is a plant or animal. So, L of x equals x is living thing, P of x, x is plant, A of x, x is an animal, H of x, x is x has heart, D, D is uh, David's dog. And from the problem given to us, we can have three hypotheses, uh, which is uh, given in our problem like for for all values of x l of x implies p of x and 
a of x. So, which means that for all living things means that it is a plant or it is an animal and uh, L of d like uh, a dog which is alive and it is not a plant, the dog is not a plant. So, that is the second hypothesis and third one is for all values of x, for all values of x a of x implies h of x. A of x uh, is is an animal, which means that whenever it is an animal it implies that it has a heart and uh, therefore, what you have to conclude is um, hence David's dog has a heart here, yeah, that is what you have to conclude. This hence part is the conclusion you have to make. So, let us uh, start from 1 by 1 and uh, from 1 you can actually see you can make a universal instantiation from one which can lead us to the next part which is let us say 4 equals using universal instantiation. Using universal instantiation let us say that L of d implies p of d or a of d. Okay, so, now let us see how further it this can be simplified. So, from uh, 2 you can use some simplification part because it is an and operation. So, you can use the simplification part there again, simplification by simplification. So, you can say that both L of d and negation of p of d, let us say this is 6 and this is okay, 7. And further down you can uh, see okay, we are supposed to have this is 5 and this is 6 because I did not write 5 anything there. And from 3 we can say universal instantiation again. So, let us say let us take universal instantiation from 3. So, we have a a of d implies h of d that is your 7 and uh, from 5 and 4 do you find some connections there can we use any things yeah from 5 and 4 you can see you can use modus ponus right let us try to use it off from 5 and 4 using modus ponus we can perform this task and you can see p of uh, d. So, p of d or a of d this can be obtained. So, let us say this as 8. So, from let us see what is uh, 6 there, 6 is negation of p of d. So, again from 6 and 8, from 6 and 8 if you use uh, disjunctive syllogism, can you recall what it is disjunctive yeah when you have p or q and negation of p is given therefore, you can conclude q or p of p and I mean p or q and negation of p implies q. So, let us take that over here and see from 6 and 8 by disjunctive syllogism 
you can now uh, conclude a of d let us say it is 9 and from 6 we are finished from 7 and 9 from 7 and 9 you can use modus ponens again let us use modus ponens that is p o n e minus bonus. Therefore, you have 10 as h of d. So, thus uh, you can say this, this is the argument is correct, right. So, you can see how the modus ponens and how, how this disjunctive soligarism or uh, hypothetical soligarism and all other simplification rules been applied. Uh, we can go step by step and see and apply each and every uh, inference and then try to make a conclusion. So, that is all about having rules of inference. I also encourage you to look into more, more examples on the rules of inference, try to understand the logic and try to prove or disprove any statement. For example, let me give you a chance, why do not you try this out? Here in this two statements A and B, I have showed you how to, how to use uh, and prove the statement A, we did not disprove it, uh, we in fact showed it can be proved and at times we have to show it as to be, we have to show that the statement is false. In other words, we are disproving it. So, B, B statement, why do, why do not you try? Try out to solve the B part, all clear explanations are satisfactory, some excuses are unsatisfactory, hence some statements are not clear. Why do not you try to solve it? So, in the meantime, I want to just uh, give you one more hint before we uh, close this uh, lecture. So, that is about uh, a so called a Venn diagram. So, Venn diagrams. So, sometimes when you make uh, certain conclusions, a pictorial representations can give us more easier thoughts or ideas or observations or conclusions can be made very easily. Uh, say for example, if I say some scientists are not engineers and uh, if I say some astronauts are engineers and if you say that uh, hence we can given these premises you can make certain conclusions for a given argument. So, if you have some Venn diagrams, they can clearly reveal us certain matters more easily. So, if suppose uh, you say you have certain Venn diagram, say for example, you have a Venn diagram like this and you have say that is why that is they have the border there. And if suppose you want to say these are the engineering engineers, scientists and astronauts. Now, you can see the relation there, some scientists are not engineers or in other words you could also say that some scientists are engineers or they are both engineers and scientists and some astronauts are also engineers and some engineers are also astronauts. So, in order to make a clear picture of certain things, it is easy for us to understand how things would work out. For example, if I say this is a living, all living things is this and if I say dog is a living thing, yeah that comes under this part and if I say this part a stone, a stone is not a living thing. So, it is outside the journal of living thing. 
yes wind diagrams can be very useful for us to understand certain things and make conclusions so i just want to give you this brief idea of what is a wind diagram uh, maybe you can have a look at it to make certain uh, decisions so this is a shortcut for you to observe things and uh, make a certain conclusions based on a given argument well today we saw uh, many things about uh, rules of inference and how it can be applied i encourage you to take part in solving many problems so that you can fully understand on this rules of inference of course you will have some assignments related to that so until we see you next time have a nice time and uh, goodbye